Hello, my name is Jiwon from the University of Michigan. Today, I'm happy to talk about our project Zeus, whose aim is to understand and optimize the energy consumption of the GPU while training DNNs. This work was done in collaboration with Jie and Mosharaf. I suppose everyone will agree that deep learning is prevalent today. At the heart of many intelligent applications are DNNs, and adoption is growing every day. To support the exploding amount of DNN training jobs, giant clusters of GPUs were created. So it's natural that GPU energy consumption have been rising over the recent few years. In an extreme scale, training the GPT-3 model just once consumes electricity to supply an average US household for 120 years. Now, this may not be as bad if training was a one-time cost, but companies need to retrain DNNs as frequently as every hour in order to ingest the most recent data coming in. And on top of all this, most of the efforts in system 4 ml have been invested into squeezing out the last ounce of performance without considering its impact on energy efficiency. Different communities invested in different efforts in trying to make things energy efficient. For example, the ML community tries to create new energy efficient architectures. However, it's not realistic to expect companies to adopt these architectures so easily because they already created their own DNNs that are best suited to their applications. Also, the hardware community tried to invest in creating more energy efficient architectures. However, companies already bought tens of thousands of GPUs and tailored their software stack to GPUs, making it very difficult to switch to these new hardware. And finally, there were some efforts in the software community to understand GPU energy, but they usually rely on offline profiling than power model fitting, which is difficult to generalize and has high, high overhead. Also, many of these works are confined to tweaking knobs in the GPU side, completely missing out on potential knobs that are in the DNN training side, leaving a lot of opportunity on the table. So we want to tune knobs in both the GPU and the job side. Then it's important to optimize what we call energy to accuracy, defined as the energy consumed for the DNN to reach its target validation accuracy set by the user. ETA can be broken down into the product of time to accuracy and average power consumption. And TTA can in turn be broken down into the number of epochs and how long it takes to train one epoch. In this context, Zeus focuses on two important knobs that affect the components of ETA significantly. One is the batch size of training, and the other is the power limit of the GPU. Batch size affects both epoch time and average power because it defines the amount of data used in each iteration of training. And likewise, power limit affects both because, for example, if you choose and set a lower power limit, it will consume less power but take longer time to compute the same thing. And finally, only batch size affects the number of epochs because tweaking the power limit does not change what is computed. As you can see, these knobs broadly affect the components that make up ETA and must be set wisely. However, our observation was that common practice neither are set optimally, giving us a lot of opportunity to save energy. To show that, we trained six DNNs with all possible combinations of batch size and power limit. The default line is what we think is the common practice, where the batch size was taken from the DNN's original paper, and we don't touch power limit, which is maximum by default. Fixing one and tweaking the other gives varying amounts of energy savings for different models. And if we jointly train both knobs, we see up to 75% energy reduction. The bottom line of this is that common practice may be wasting a lot of energy. And there is a certain knob pair out there that leads to good energy savings. But more importantly from that experiment, we can get a deeper understanding of how training time and energy consumption are related. 
we can spray the observed ETA, TTA pairs on a 2D grid. And this is where the previous default point was. And we can see a very clean part of frontier of TTA and ETA. Zooming in, these are the part of optimal batch size and power limit pairs. We can learn two things from this plot. One, making it faster isn't necessarily making it energy efficient. Two, and more importantly, Pareto efficient time and energy show a trade-off. Okay, then we ask, which yellow point is the best? Of course, the answer is it depends. Different jobs in the cluster will have different preferences of trading off time and energy. So we define the cost of the NN training as a linear combination of energy and time with a single parameter, eta. Then the goal of Zeus is to automatically tune the batch size and power limit of the GPU so that cost is minimized. However, this is a very difficult problem. We only see the Pareto frontier there because we brute force trained every single possible combination of batch size and power limit. In reality, obtaining the value of each of those gray dots can take hours, days, or even weeks. As a solution to this optimization problem, we present Zeus, an energy optimization framework for the NN training. Zeus can identify the optimal batch size and power limit on any DM model, any GPU, efficiently. And it can do so without any offline profiling, hardware modification, or accuracy degradation. Let me walk through the overall workflow of Zeus. Of course, there's a GPU, and on top of that, there are DL frameworks like PyTorch. And we use NVML to set the power limit and also measure power consumption. Zeus sits on top of this as an optimization framework that sets job level and GPU level knobs. Now, the central idea that enables Zeus is that it views retraining jobs as opportunity for learning more about how cost behaves when we tweak batch size and power limit, instead of just wasting them by viewing each retraining run as independent runs. When one recurrence of the retraining job is submitted to Zeus, its internal power limit and batch size optimizer sets their corresponding knobs and training is launched. Then during and after training, we collect stats such as power consumption, throughput, and accuracy, which is used to update the internal states of the power limit and batch size optimizer. From here, I'm going to talk about how we decouple the two variables optimization, and then about each of the knobs optimizer. Going back to the ETA breakdown figure, one observation is that the effect batch size has on the components of ETA are random due to the stochastic nature of DNN training, which depends on the random seed. However, power limit is much easier because its influence on ETA is fully deterministic. In fact, epoch time and average power are simply constants throughout training. So it's actually very easy to measure epoch time and average power for every possible power limit during training. This enables the decoupling of the two optimization variables. We design a batch size optimizer that can give us the optimal batch size to use. And given this batch size, the power limit optimizer finds the optimal power limit for that batch size in a fully online manner. We call that just-in-time power profiling. At the beginning of training, we go through each possible power limit and profile its power and throughput. And it only takes a couple seconds per power limit. And this is obviously very efficient, not only because it's online, but also because you just need to do it exactly once for each batch size. For the batch size optimizer, we set forth two principles. First, it should be fully aware of the stochastic nature of DNN training. And second, it should be able to intelligently trade off the cost of going out and searching for a potentially better batch size versus the immediate gain of exploiting a batch size that is already known to be good. 
we adopt and extend a classical statistics tool called multi-arm bandit. And we'd like to ask the audience to refer to our paper for more details. Zeus was evaluated on a very diverse set of workloads. And we did all these on four recent NVIDIA GPU generations. And we saw improvement across everything. I'd like to mention that Zeus, to the best of our knowledge, is the first of its kind, not only in terms of really seriously looking into energy, but also in terms of optimizing something across retraining jobs. So we compare ourselves against grid search, which visits each possible configuration point exactly once. And grid search is not a good batch size optimizer in that it is not aware of the stochastic nature of the NN training and it even fails to converge to the optimal knob. However, you can see that the exploration trajectory of Zeus is much more efficient thanks to the decoupling of batch size and power limit and also the multi-arm bandit. And it also safely converges to the optimal knob. Zeus also yields to large benefits across all workloads. We compare again to the cost of default knobs, and we see energy reduction up to 76%. This is done by trading off small amounts of time of workloads that were already on the Pareto frontier, that were already throughput optimal. But if the default point wasn't even on the Pareto frontier, Zeus will bring it onto the Pareto frontier, thereby reducing time by up to 60% too. Now, at the risk of breaking, I prepared a live demo of the just-in-time power profiler of Zeus. If I can get Wi-Fi working, let's see. Maybe I'll have to stop the show in order to show this. No, oh, I see. OK, it somehow worked. You're seeing below a power monitor that I wrote with ChatGPT. And the GPU is in idle state, so power consumption is low. And above is the Docker container image we provide for Zeus. And I just downloaded the Hugging Face Diffuser's stable diffusion fine tuning code and replaced its data loader with the Zeus data loader. And for the script too, I just scraped it out from the Hugging Face example, but gave it a few environment variables to tell the just-in-time power profiler of Zeus to find the most energy efficient power limit. So as we begin training, you can see that as the CUDA context is created, the GPU power ramps up. And as training, the Zeus data loader will automatically scan from the highest power limit, which is 300 for this GPU, all the way down to 125 watts power limit and profile the throughput and power of each power limit. We're at, what is that? 250 watts right now. And we're searching for the most energy efficient one, but you may ask then like, why is the answer just the lowest power limit? It's because energy is power integrated over time. So we may, for example, choose a very low power limit and reduce power by 2x. But if that makes time longer by 4x, that's going to increase energy by 2x. So those power limits, which take more time and more energy, will not be on the Pareto frontier. We are currently at, yeah, we are at the last power limit right now. And you can see that it only took how many minutes? Not even two minutes, no? It can find, as we go through the power limit of the last one, it will solve this internal optimization problem to figure out that the cost optimal power limit is 175 watts, and from here on, training will run with the most energy efficient power limit forever. Okay, let's go back to the. Yep, I'll conclude now. Zeus is a practical energy optimization framework that can optimize the energy for any VNN on existing GPUs in a fully online manner that jointly considers knobs from both the job side and the GPU side. Yep, and that'll be all, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you.